In this episode, we're going to dive into a viewer question. What is card unlocking in Splinterlands? Why would you want to do it? When would you want to do it? How do you go about it if you wanted to do it? Well, if this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey, all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. If you continue to like this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe. Pass it around in all the various uh, social media channels where people are checking out Splinterlands. I would appreciate it. Okay, now in this episode, um, I was going to do a standard episode where I spend my end of season glint, but I've been getting some questions in about uh, the whole process. Uh, in Splinterlands, um, glint is a... Uh, is something you earn for playing and you can turn around and you can use that to buy cards or you can buy chests with uh, that which have a number of different random items cards among them but other things as well Bef but before we dive into that i want to give thanks where thanks is due okay this last week i want to give a thanks to aaron baker gathering the magic why not one two three four young eagle 95 kgm jam and barlow trash panda and of course blaze all of these persons did something in the past week to week and a half to help the channel out whether it's giving a uh, super thanks or super chat on the live stream or sending over cards uh what have you um i do appreciate all these things help me keep going so the question came up recently it was uh, i saw it on a video uh chat of mine and i also saw it in uh, a live stream and i also saw it on discord uh recently so i figured i would go ahead and just put it into one of my videos um so we will go ahead and uh, i will explain the process of earning glint and buying cards um but uh let's take a step back for those that are relatively new to the game okay so obviously splinterlands is a card game it's a collectible card game um and uh one of the reasons that it attracted me. I, I'm a former uh, Magic the Gathering player, um, but there are some of the issues with physical cards that uh, the NFT cards in Game and Splinterlands solved. And one of those was being able to buy, sell, trade cards without having to go down to the local shop or put up with uh, eBay shenanigans. Okay, So um, in this game, as far as I know, I think there's four major ways you can get cards to play this card game. OK, you can buy them. You can buy packs. You can buy singles off the store. You can rent them. You can rent cards in this game for a very low price. It's very economical, especially for people coming into the game. You can have people. People can loan you cards. Uh, I can send you. I can loan you several cards and I don't have to send them to you. I can just loan them to you on the blockchain and you can use them. Now, the fourth way is what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, the fourth way is earning them. One of the ways you can earn in this game is earning glint to spend on cards to strengthen your deck, which is basically like uh, Dwayne Cunningham likes to say, your time and attention. I can't think of a better way to say it, uh, so I'm just going to use it. So, But all credit where credit is due. So in this game, you can play and earn glint and turn around and buy cards. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we're on the main page here, the main battle page. If you go to your rewards box here, you can see the shop button, and this is, it takes you to the shop. Um, you can see your glint balance. This is what I've totaled up earned. Uh, most of this is from last season because I usually spend the greatest percentage of it on a week to week basis. Um, so uh, I have that, uh, I can spend that on cards if I want to. And right next to that, we see the season end loot number. Now, um, as you play, you earn glint, which we're talking about, and you can also earn SPS in the game, which is the main token, okay? Um, and you earn a little bit, or in some cases, a lot with each match you win, but you also get a bulk uh, of uh, rewards at the end of the season as well. So that's what this glint balance was from, from my last season. So let's go to the shop and buy some cards. We go into the shop. Uh, this first section is rarity draws, okay? You can, you can pick what rarity of card you want okay you don't know which card you're getting but if i choose epic draws i know i'm getting epic cards okay now below that if you want gold foils 
then you can choose gold foils. Of course, they cost more, but there are certain advantages of gold foils. We're not going to get into that in this episode, but that's also a possibility here. You can buy loot chests, which I mentioned earlier, um, and you can get cards. You can get multiple copies of the cards, depending upon which type of chest you buy, right? Um, or you can get other things. You can get more energy to play in the game. You can get merits. Uh, you can get potions. There's a number of things you can get, and you have a very small chance of getting a really nice prize. Now, below here, uh, you can also specifically buy merits, which is a way to buy a different type of pack, which I like. Like you can buy energy, which lets you play more in the game, or you can buy potions, which helps you get a higher rarity or more chance of getting a higher rarity or more chance of getting a gold foil card when you open packs or when you open draws. So that's what's available in the store right now. Okay, let's go ahead and just for the sake of... Um, spending some of my money. If you've been following me, you know I love uh, spending my uh, um, spending my glint on merits. I usually buy the first three uh, ranks of merits, batches. Now, as you buy each batch, the cost goes up. We will go by, the packs that you buy with merits are called gladius cases. Um, Okay, so now if you've been following me, you know I love the epic cart. So I'm going to buy, let's see, a full batch would be 25. And that is 187,500 glint, which is more than half of what I've got. Yeah, uh, let's do, yeah, let's go for it. And of course, I'm going to use my potions. I want a better chance of getting gold foils. Okay, let's reveal all. Th a nice gold foil. Uh, of course, it's the Kazi Conjurer. One of my least used cards. Okay, so we've got a nice assortment of cards. Now, I always buy one legendary draw. These are quite expensive, but I always try to add to my collection a little bit at a time. This is how you can do it. You can win uh, your glint on a weekly basis and just slowly build your deck just by playing. Okay, Warborn Chieftain. Okay, and let's buy some rare draws. And at this point, I'll say shout out to Gathering the Magic. We did a deal this past week, which helped me. Um, he basically unlocked uh, level five commons and sold them to me. Um, and he gave me a, a decent deal as well. So I was able to up level my common cards uh, from seven to eight. So uh, common cards have a max level of 10. So I'm on the way at level eight. They're nice and usable uh, where I see. Them, so, okay. So we are down. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the cards. We're over here in my card collection. I can go to Rebellion, which is the current set, and click on Rewards. And I will go to Commons, and you can see that most of these were level 8. Um, so let's go ahead and combine these all. This is another key aspect of the card game, okay? Uh, leveling up your cards. You get single copies, which are referred to as BCX in this game, and to level them up, it takes a certain number of cards to combine to level your cards up. You can take and click on a card and go over to the stats section, and you can see under the card number of cards column how many it takes. It takes 400 comments to make one max level. But as you level them up, they get stronger. Their, their stats, they gain different stats. Their stats go up. So that's what makes it worth leveling up. Okay. And then continuing with the rares I got, combining them. 
they're all leveling up nicely. Uh, I guess I fall into the situation of leveling up slowly but surely, but that's what it's all about. This is called uh, leveling up your cards um, through time and attention, like Dwayne likes to say. And let's go ahead and level up. See if any of my level, uh, any of my epics level up. I'm mostly level fours. There's two level threes. This is where the power lies in this set, I think. Okay, they're all at level four now. And legendary, I don't think I have any to combine. Um, okay, that was my first Warborn Chieftain. Okay, okay, now on to the main question of the day since I've bought my new cards. Uh, I just demonstrated how you get cards. You play the game, of course. Um, these cards are what's called soul bound. When you play the game and you earn the cards, they are soul bound. So you can play with them, but you can't sell them or you can't transfer them to someone else. Okay. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and unlock, that's the, the term, unlock the card to be able to buy uh, or to sell it or trade it or send it to somebody, you would need to go through the unlocking process. So here we are on a previous uh, set uh, version of a card um, that's locked. You can tell that it has a little chain down in the corner. That means it's locked or it's bound, soul bound to your account. So I have one BCX. I'm just going to use this as an example. If you say, for instance, wanted to unbind this, um, I think unbind and unlock are used interchangeable, but I think by the game's terminology, unbind is the correct terminology. You would see this little chain next to the card, and you could click on that, and it will give you the unbinding window. Okay, It'll give you a few facts here. It'll tell you, um, because unbinding prices change over time, they progressively get more expensive until they cut off and you cannot unbind anymore. So with this card, we will see that um, the price will progress or get higher in eight and a half days or eight days and 17 hours. Now, I have 68 days left to unbind this card. Otherwise, it's going to be permanently soul bound. OK, um, so after that, what we look at is the cost multiplier, which increases over time. So uh, the price gets more expensive. Now, uh, you can see that I have a total of one card ready to unbind. This is one BCX, one copy of this card. And in the next line, you can pick how you want to pay because you have to pay to unbind it. You can pay in dark energy crystals. You can pay in credits or you can pay in uh, DECB. Now, if you're relatively new to the game, then credits are going to be your option. Credits can be purchased directly through the game using PayPal or some other methods, direct money, basically, not uh, having to uh, go and get crypto. Okay. Now, of course, if you have DEC like I do up here, I have both DEC and credits in stock. I could use either one. For ease of use, credits. So like it would take 65 credits to unlock this one copy of this card. But generally speaking, as long as the value of DEC is below 1000 DEC per dollar, it's cheaper to use DEC if you have it. Okay, so with this, uh, with with that said, uh, I chose DEC because 65 DEC is a little bit cheaper than 65 credits overall. I'm going to click unbind and then you'll get the confirmation And now, look, the chain is gone. I have this one copy of this card, and I can go back, and you can see that this copy of this card no longer has this chain here. Now, I can click on that, and I can send it to somebody. I can uh, list it for sale or rent on the market. I can delegate it, which is the, early, uh, is the proper terminology for loaning it, like I was talking about earlier. I can lock it. That's like if it's a very important card to your deck and you don't want anything, uh, no possibility of it being bought, sold, traded, whatever off your account, you can lock it, which is a good thing to do. You can even burn it, which is a different topic for a different day. 
So this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, like I said, this was aimed at the discussion about what is uh, unlocking or unbinding. Uh, generally speaking, this is uh, information people coming into the game will need uh, at a certain point, and it's good information to have overall. So in this episode, I walked through the whole process. I took some glint that I earned in my last season. I bought some cards and beefed up my deck a little bit. I turned around and selected a soulbound card from my collection that I wanted to go ahead and unbind so I could sell it on the market. I did that. So I hope this has been uh, useful for you. Uh, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And hey, I'll see you in Splinterlands. Mm -hmm.